All right, well, good afternoon. I'm gonna and the, make sure we have plenty of time for everything today. We've got some exciting stuff going on with the life course and with uh, the great adapted outdoors. So if you, as you come in, please put who you are in the chat. And if the poll is still up, please complete our opening poll. But we will go ahead and get started, Angelina, if you wanna go to the next slide. So here's today's objectives. We've got some exciting events coming up. Uh, actually, one more exciting event. We've had exciting events for the past few months. Going to do a very brief overview of the Missouri No Wrong Door Project. And then also I thought today I would talk about, um, just do a life course overview and talk about that medallion that you guys often see and what that means. And then Scout is going to talk about the great adapted outdoors. So I'm Julie Reynolds, and I'm with the University of Missouri, Kansas City Institute for Human Development. And we are a University Center for Excellence in Developmental Disabilities. Uh, for the state of Missouri. So we are very proud to be here. We are also the, the home of the Life Course Nexus, the Training Life Course Nexus, which we talk about that on a, on a monthly basis here. Um, and our monthly workshop here is sponsored by the No Run Door Project. So go ahead to the next slide, Angelina. So I wanna talk about our showcases coming up um, very soon. Um, actually, it's about three weeks away. Our, um, it's, it's usually an annual showcase, although we have not had one since 2019 with all the things that have been happening. Um, but it is coming up April 13th and 14th in Kansas City, Missouri. Um, I have two things. I will drop a link to the registration in the chat. Um, the other thing I wanted to say is that we do have some limited scholarships available for people that are participating in the No Wrong Door grant. So if you think you might be interested in attending um, attending our life course showcase in Kansas City, Missouri on April 13th and 14th. I'm going to just put a, uh, a link in the chat and I'll put that in there again at the end and remind you. If you are interested in coming and would like a scholarship, we are offering scholarships either for registration, um, which is $350, or for two nights at the hotel here in Kansas City. So if you just go to that first link I gave you, you'll see more information about the life course showcase. We will have um, people from throughout the country coming in, uh, talking within the different uh, domains and, and life course areas about the different things they are doing, how they're using the life course, how they're using the tools. It's always a very uh, nice interactive, we call it a showcase, but it's really more than a conference. It's a great time to meet new people, find out what they're doing around the life course and those sorts of things. So um, I encourage you guys to take a look. And if you're interested in coming, please register. If you're interested in coming but would like a scholarship, please go ahead and, and click on that little tiny URL I just put out there. And I will put that up again um, throughout the meeting. So go ahead to the next slide, Angelina. So as we've talked about before, we are all really stakeholders here um, and, and involved in the Missouri No Wrong Door project. And again, it is just how we want to support people um, and help change the way that they access services so that they have all the knowledge they need for both the individuals and the caregivers, you know, to have good information about what all your options are for long-term services and supports, regardless of who you are, what kind of, whether you're looking at a senior, senior person, someone with a developmental disability, a physical disability, any of those things, how do we really get people in the right door that they need to go in? And it's partnerships among you know, the people that are on these calls, you know, the AAAs, the Centers for Independent Living, the Targeted Case Management Organizations, all those places, support coordinators. Um, I know I'm going to leave people out, so I apologize. It's just kind of coming off the top of my head, but this is how we, we support people of really trying to try and find ways where there is no wrong door. The next slide, Angelina. And here you can kind of talk about, you know, we're kind of building that statewide network and you all are part of the statewide network. Um, you know, we have worked closely with our AAAs and our Centers for Independent Living. Um, we've worked closely with, with lots of state agencies to try and make sure we know we are able to pull together and let people know what is out there for long-term services and supports in their community. You know, how you, how you access case management, how you access support coordination, whatever, whatever, we, we, uh, whatever you want to call that. You know, some of the innovative projects that kind of cross across all the populations. And this, this monthly workshop, I think, is a great example of really bringing people together um, across all kinds of disciplines and, and really learning more about turning the life course, um, which, which can lead to a great person-centered planning and about assistive technology. So you can just kind of see our statewide partners there. And that list has really continued to grow 
um, as we have worked on this project over the past year and a half, two years, I've, I've lost track of time as I'm sure most of us have. So go ahead to the next slide, Angelina. So I want to move over to talking about charting with a life, charting the life course. Um, and again, this is really a, a, a framework for driving transformational change. How do we make changes in, in systems that support individuals and families? Um, how do we make sure that you know, everybody thinks sort of in a person-centered and family-centered manner? So the framework, you know, the tools and, and some of the, the communication things and the net, network is really, really helps us you know, build a build a transformative system that leads to some cultural change for working with people with with all kinds of disabilities and and any other individual and, and family member. So go ahead. So you see this medallion over here to the right, which is what we're going to talk about in the next slide. But just to kind of continue on with turning the life course, it really allows individuals, families, you know, caregivers, providers, anyone to really help. You know, individuals and families explore all their life possibilities in all kinds of different areas. Um, it's just a kind of a framework to share ideas, people's hopes and fears, which are just, you know, that's hard to do, especially when you're working with a large number of people to really make sure you're addressing these things. Also helping people set higher expectations. Um, in many times in our field, we set lower expectations. The bar is set really too low for people. Um, and the higher we set expectations, the more people will strive to, to reach those higher expectations. We also help people think about navigating the future and what are some of those things that might be coming up called you know, anticipatory guidance and how do we start thinking about, about what is gonna come in the future you know, for um, you know, someone with a, a child in early intervention or in preschool or early, early education, what does the future look like and how do you start anticipating what's going to happen? Um, it also just advocates for the vision for people's good life. What do you want to have for your good life and how can we help you get there? Um, and then also problem solving and planning. So I'm going to take a few minutes on this next slide to really talk about what this medallion means. I think I've got a bigger picture of it here. Yes, the big giant medallion. So um, I thought about being fancy and trying to pull every piece in at a one at a time, but that just, that overcame me. PowerPoint is not my friend. So I'm just going to kind of just start pointing out. So if you start looking at the very center of that medallion, you kind of see a a person outlined in blue there. And that's really who we think of as the individual. So the individual is really the center um, of this, of the, the life course framework. Really thinking about it, it can be you know, any individual. If we think about the all, it can be individuals with any sort of you know, disability, aging, any of those things um, that we are, are supporting. So, and you can see around, around the person you see, um, you see their family, those people that within that blue that are a little, little more grayed out. That's the person's family. And one thing I always like to stress, and we always like to stress, is that your family can really be anyone that individual identifies as a family member. So often when I've talked to families and, and caregivers, you know, one thing that we hear a lot, and it, it is very true that it's it's difficult for them to do everything, that all the expectations are placed on them you know, to provide, to provide care and support for that individual. But really what we want, because people need a, a bigger life than just their immediate family, is who else do they identify as their family with, within? So is it, you know, there can be members of your community, there can be friends, there can be, you know, people from work, there can be people that you attend church with, those kinds of things. So we really, when we talk about the individual there in the middle in the context of their family, we really want to support any type of family that that individual identifies as their family. So then as we kind of go out from that circle, we see the different life domains. So I'm just going to spend a brief time really like on each of those and we'll keep moving out. So, you know, we talk a lot within the, for the individual within the context of the family. You know, what do you do in your daily life? What do you like to do every day during the week, on weekends? You know, what does your life look like and what do you want it to look like? What are your aspirations? What are your goals? And you know, that's, again, where some of those tools we've talked about come in, the, the trajectory, you know, the kind of mapping relations, those kinds of things. And then also within daily life is employment. You know, most, you know, many, many people, people are employed in work and what does their work look like and what do they want their, their, their life, their daily life and their employment to be? So, you know, I think all of us, as we are growing up, start thinking about what we want to be when we grow up. 
um, whether it's an astronaut, which I never wanted to do that. I don't know why. I think it's a normal thing people want, but I didn't. But what do you want to do when you grow up? And I think that sometimes we shortchange, you know, individuals with disabilities by not really starting to talk about, you know, their, their daily life and employment, especially employment, as they, as they go through life. So I think it's very important. That's one of the most important domains I think we have is really how do we address what you want to do in your daily life and what kind of work you want to do. So then kind of moving down to the right, we have a domain of social and spirituality, which is really all that, you know, your socialization, the people you interact with, the groups you belong to, um, how you address your spirituality, whether it is through church groups or other ways to address your spirituality. Um, we are all social beings. And I think one thing that, you know, COVID taught us is that um, as much as we are, we are able to do these things through Zoom, we've learned to be more social through Zoom also learning that we need other people around to be social with. So really looking at for the individual and their family, what do they want from their social and spiritual, spiritual life? You know, how do they want to address that? Are there things that they're doing now or things that they want to do in the future that kind of helps lead them to that good life in that area? And then kind of moving around, if you all want to go upside down, see if I was fancy, I could have twisted this, but I did it. So we talk a lot about safety and security, which is important to all of us. You know, how do we make sure um, that people are safe, that we are safe, that they are secure, you know, where they're living, where they're working, where they're going. And, you know, we tend to a lot of times in this, in this field, um, stress and, and try and kind of bubble wrap people um, in, in kind of safety and security. And I think that's the, the other end of it, that we have to be careful when we talk to people about safety and security to allow them to have some dignified risk. You know, how do you stay safe and secure, but still be allowed to do all the things you want to do in your daily life? with your socialization, those sorts of things. But it is an important thing really to look at for, for people of how we make sure, and for ourselves as well and our families, how do we make sure we have we are safe and secure? Then upside down here, if anyone wanted to stand on their head, we have community living, uh, which is really where do you live? Where do you want to live? How do you live in your community? And while we have an icon that is a home, because your home is very important of where you wanna live and how you wanna live, who you wanna live with, if you wanna live with someone, but it's also the other things that you do in your community. Your home is, is within your community and how do you access and address your community? How do you live in your community? Do you have, you know, do you have friends and neighbors that you can want walks with? Do you have people that, you know, that, that go places with you, those sorts of things, you know, is your home, again, going back safe and secure? And are you able to access things like transportation to get, get to your job or to get to things you wanna do, you know, during the week or on weekends? So really important to think about how people want, want to live their lives. And of course, you know, how you live, what kind of accommodations you need in your, in your living situation to make sure you can live your best life there. So then moving kind of up around the thing where you can start reading it without being upside down, we have healthy living. So really thinking about, and I think we've all, um, you know, what we've been through has really thought about how, how are we healthier? How do we address wellness? How do we make sure that we are living a healthy life, you know, whatever that means for people, if it means, you know, exercise, if it means walking, if it means, um, you know, spending more time outside, whatever that means for people, you know, kind of addressing how you can live your, your best life in a healthy manner, because your health and wellness really affects all the other areas we're talking about here. And then kind of last on the circle through this one is the domain of advocacy and engagement. Uh, and really, how do you advocate for yourself? How do you advocate and engage? Um, how does your family, your, your caregivers and your friends advocate and engage with you and for you? So, you know, self-advocacy and people really pushing for what they want, what they need is very, very important. You know, as is, as is individuals really engaging within their community, within all these areas we're talking about. So, you know, all of these kind of bring together you know, sort of that, those domains for that whole life for that person. And sometimes there's, there's some of these domains that are not, that people don't address immediately because you're thinking about your more immediate needs. But sometimes when you're kind of planning and thinking about person-centered or families that are planning, it's sometimes just nice to kind of utilize these and talk a little bit about all the things, you know, that you can do in these areas and then find out what's important to that, that individual and that family. So I'm going to move a little further out to the three things you see around the, around the top here. And I keep moving my mouse like you can see it. And I know you cannot. Um, so we talk a lot about, first of all, the discovery and navigation. And this is really the area, we call these the three buckets that you see around here. Um, 
you know, discovery and navigation is a lot of what all of us on this call do. We get calls and contacts from people all the time, people and families trying to figure out what's out there that I that I need. How, how do I find out, you know, if this service or support is available to me? Um, you know, where do I find things? And as, as wonderful as I think things like Google and those sorts of things are, it can also be very overwhelming. So, you know, all of you on this call, you know, work in discovery and navigation with people every day when you get calls or people coming in or people you're working with, like, how do I know if this is available or what this is? And then, you know, once you've discovered it, and I think we can all agree with some state systems, it is very difficult to navigate through a lot of systems. There's a lot of application. There's a lot of things you need to do. So really, how do you discover what you need? Um, and sometimes with discovery, you don't know what you don't know until someone helps you. And then also, how do you navigate through those systems? So I think those are a couple of the things that are very important, regardless of what domain you're working in. And then we talk about over here, upside down in the orange, uh, is really connecting and networking. So once you've discovered what you need and learned how to navigate through that, how do you connect with people and how do you network to get the support you need? Um, and that can be any kind of support. That can be paid services in the paid service system. You know, how do you connect with people? It can also be how you connect and network, you know, within a, a local organization or with, as we're going to talk about in a few minutes, with the great outdoors. You know, how do you discover, Scott's going to talk about this, things with the great outdoors. I and mean, then how do you network and connect with people so you can access those and utilize those? And then really that last bucket is goods and services. You know, what goods and services do you need after you've discovered a network to put in your bucket? You know, what do you need for in your bucket from goods and services to have your best life? So those are kind of the three buckets. And then many of you might recognize the outside of the, the, uh, the medallion here is really the, the integrated support star. Um, and again, we always talk about within the context of all these things, the individual, the family, the domains, the buckets, you know, what are your personal strengths and assets? What do you bring to the table that you have or that you might have that you can do? You know, everything from I can drive to I am resilient to I have my own credit card and I can balance my checkbook. You know, everything, um, anything that is a strength or an asset that you bring to the table or that you want to bring to the table. And I think this is one of the most important things to stress when we're talking with people is that really, you know, those personal strengths and assets you bring, you can use those to build upon all the other areas and build upon the areas, you know, within your life domains. And we talk about the relationship base. You know, who are you, who do you have relationships with? Who are your friends? Who are your coworkers? You know, who do you run into at the grocery that you talk to? Who maybe takes you, you know, to the store? Who, you know, who do you go go out and go to a basketball game with, those kind of things. Who are those people that you have relationships with? As we get down to the bottom, we talk about eligible, eligibility specific um, things you can access. So, you know, for individuals with disabilities, there are, there's Medicaid, there's Medicare for older Americans. There's also things like those, the HCBS waivers, um, the Older Americans Act. So lots of things that people can be specifically eligible for um, that kind of helps them get to their good life. We also talk about community base. Where is your community? You know, kind of goes along with your community living and your daily life and employment, your social and spirituality. You know, what do you have out in your community? What, you know, what clubs do you attend? What parks do you go to? Um, you know, what, what wellness events do you attend? You know, all those community-based areas um, really fit into the domains and, and what we're doing for, with individuals and families. And then last but definitely not least, because that is the, uh, the topic of the day, uh, is technology. And we have talked obviously a lot about this um, through these, these meetings. And I feel like people have gotten some really good information um, from Missouri Assistive Technology around this. But this is a great place to think about where technology fits into you know, any of these domains we talked about, where technology for employment that we've talked about, for community living things in the kitchen we've talked about in the past, you know, your social spirituality and your healthy living. What can you do out of the park? Um, so with that, Angelina, if you'd go to the next slide. We will turn it over to Scout. Scout, if you'd like to introduce yourself and start your part, and thank you guys for listening. All right, thanks so much, Julie. It was uh, really great to have a little bit more attention on that medallion. I, uh, I, I, I think um, there's so many ways we, we can think about how to support uh, the, the folks we serve, and that's just such a, I don't know, it's such a great tool. 
Um, so today, this is the part two of the um, Great Adapted Outdoors. And we are going to look more at um, group focused recreation today. So, um, oh, and I, I'm sorry, I forgot to do the introduction. Um, I am Scout. I work for Missouri Assistive Technology, and uh, we serve the whole state of Missouri um, um, in, with lots of programs to help people have access to um, different types of assistive technology. All right, let's go on to our first slide. So, uh, so when you think about, you know, getting out and kind of recreation and sporting events, you know, there are some very large um, group activities that, that we can do together. Um, so like going to a, a huge sporting event, I do live in Kansas City, and so um, Chiefs games, I can hear the roar from, from my house. Uh, they are probably about the largest uh, group activity I can think of. Um, but you know, lots of these big venues uh, can accommodate a lot of, of, of a large variety of, of disability types. And so in the next slide, I actually have um, a list. If we can go. Yeah, so this isn't even all the features that um, a large stadium would have. And some of them we would be really aware of and others we kind of wouldn't even notice. So the um, what's called here PRM uh, parking spaces. This is for people with reduced mobility. Um, so we're all pretty aware of like the blue parking, but things like a lower counter at a concession stand that's really a, an accommodation for folks who are using a wheelchair um, so that they can have a really direct access to, uh, to the vendors. Uh, so we're familiar with wheelchair seating areas, but maybe not so much that there might be an escort that can help you. Um, you might not know that, that some uh, venues have assistive listening and looping for folks with, with hearing impairments. Um, we all have seen elevators and ramps, but we might not know that the visual contrast and the non-skid um, coating on the stairs not only helps people with visual impairments, but also just kind of helps all of us. So, you know, the list goes on with, with some, um, some different features that uh, different uh, locations will have. But we, we don't have to go through every one. We can hop to the next slide. Um, so I did want to mention that, of course, the, the ADA does minimums, right? And so a lot of venues are required to, to do um, what is the ADA standard, but some venues are actually going above and beyond. And I just kind of do want to do a shout out to those. Um, and they're across the country, it's, um, but they may have a sensory room. Um, some folks have done uh, indoor wayfinding apps, um, so you can get to the concession stand and then back to your seat. Um, some venues offer sign language interpreters, and um, they may offer a detailed map of the exterior and the interior, so you can really prepare for a visit. So, you know, I just say that to, to kind of sh sh show that there may be uh, ways that we are moving forward to really include more people with disabilities. And I wanna take a second here to say, if you are helping somebody go to, um, um, whether it's a small ball field or a large venue, and you notice something that, that either doesn't work for, for somebody in your family, or you may say, hey, you know, the sign for the parking is gone and so just anybody seems to be parking in the accessible parking spot. It's a really good opportunity to, to in, uh, go back to that, that um, what I like to, what I think of as the pie in that medallion of the advocacy and engagement. If, if you're working with somebody who wants to go somewhere and, and it's not accessible, then taking that step to make that call to say, hey, you know, this isn't working for me. Is there a way you can add more accessible parking? Is there a way you can remove a seat so that I have room for a wheelchair? Is there a way? Um, and if you are unsure, 
just a shout out here. If you are unsure what the requirements are, uh, Great Plains ADA is a, a great resource for um, information on the ADA. And they cover the whole state of Missouri. That's Great Plains ADA. All right, let's go ahead and move off of this topic and into um, what about if you want to play sports? Um, if you want to join a team, and you know, I think that the the opportunity to join a team is um, is a great way. You know, when we talk about that community living aspect and that social aspect um, in that um, in that medallion in that you know pie chart. Um, I just think sports can be a really great, great way to be included. Um, there are, there's such a huge variety of sports and so many ways to adapt them. So um, we'll go forward and look at some, some of this. So I had, to, I had to put in what I consider the Mad Max of adaptive sports, which is wheelchair rugby. Uh, if you've never seen it, man, it is fast action and fun. But you can see from these pictures that there are some very specialized wheelchairs that are used in the sport. Um, it is a uh, kind of intense game. Um, I will say to, to, play, to play this sport, um, you do have to be a, um, you have to be a person with quadriplegia. So all four quadrants have to be affected to be eligible to play I guess on a competitive level, uh, wheelchair rugby. Um, but we'll move on to the next slide. And not everybody wants to do something that intense. Um, there are lots and lots of gentler options. The first, uh, the first picture is uh, adaptive yoga. So you know whether you are doing yoga from a standing position, from a wheelchair, or from a seated position. Um, yoga is one of those really great, easily adaptable um, you know, you know, sports or recreation opportunities, and there's classes everywhere. The other picture is, um, a, is a picture of beep ball. So there's a couple of sports that use um, sound of beeping balls, and so kickball and softball are the I think the two most common. So lots of lots of um, ways to really uh, work out your body or to gently, more gently engage in sports. But we'll talk some more. Uh, let's go to the next slide about the the variety. So I I went to the Special Olympics site and said, okay, just what kind of sports are they offering? Um, because we all know, you know, there's a variety of sports out there, but in the Special Olympics, so they are adapting in, men, you know, in different ways. Um, things like track and field, basketball, bocce, which I think is really cool. Um, if you've never played bocce, I, I encourage you to look into that. And it's a sport that can be adapted in some interesting ways. Uh, bowling, flag football, golf, powerlifting. Um, I did not get into ways to adapt powerlifting. Uh, softball, swimming, volleyball, tennis, there's a couple of more, but you know, just this wide variety of sports teams and events that, that you know, people can look into and see how can I join in and make this part of my, part of my life, part of my, um, you know, join this community of, of, of players. And really kind of, if that's a goal, there's just so many ways to enter in. All right, let's look at the next slide. All right, so ways to adapt uh, your own activities. So um, really when it, when I think the first thing to look at is the like ball sports. Um, so you can use a larger ball, a smaller ball, a brighter, a softer, you know, any kind of way you can change up the ball um, can really maybe help folks with different kinds of limitations. Um, adding Velcro to a, a glove, and you can add it to the glove and the ball, and really make that um, that ease of catching, which is really um, make it really successful. Um, using bean bags or weighted balls, so so they don't roll away. 
And I, I think of this, especially, um, I, have a, I have a daughter who juggles. And you, know, you learn to juggle with bean bags because bending over and picking up the balls is enough work. Um, and then trying to throw them and catch them, you don't want to have to chase them around the room. So, but for different sports, the weighted balls or bean bag type balls are, uh, are a nice option. You can use a lightweight bat, racket, or club. You can add grip aids. Um, I saw some where they said use ace bandage, which I wouldn't think would be the best, but you can use sports tape, um, stretchy and sticky, but, but not, I mean, it sticks to itself, but not to your hands. There's also um, uh, a product called Cat Tongue, which is grippy, and of course, Dysum, which is grippy. And you can add any of those to reduce your grip. There's also um, a band, I'm sorry, I meant to look up the name, but there is a grip aid you can add to things. So you can just slide your, your hand in and, and basically have no grip needed. And then you could still play a sport um, like a racket sport without grip. Um, you can make your own goals, uh, whether you're adapting the basketball, um, the standard hoop, or whether you are make, using something of your own, like a trash can. You can make soccer goals bigger or smaller, however you need to do it, using a beep ball. And then you could use um, PVC pipe or tubes or gutter to direct bocce balls or golf balls, you know, all kinds of ways to adapt your activity to your particular needs. I was going to try to advance the slide myself and I cannot, so I will ask Angelina. There we go. So I wanna show you this, um, the bottom right picture with the bowling ball and the PVC pipe. So this is, it's, it's a homemade bowling ramp. Um, Probably if you've been bowling, you may have seen the bowling ramps that they can pull out, um, but you can also make them yourself. And this one is kind of interesting because you can adapt this same frame for a bocce ball. And you just change out like two little pipes and um, it'll just make it a more narrow ramp and you can use it for bocce as well. So that's kind of nice. And you could probably just do a Google search for it. And if you are interested, I could find it and send it to you. Um, but you know, above that is a cush ball. When I talked about weighted balls or beanbag balls, you know, um, the cush ball is also a, a nice option. It's not going to roll away. It's, uh, it's, it might be a little easier to grab for some folks. So when you're thinking about catching, you know, any kind of catching game, um, you can try that. And then I've got two different styles of basketball hoops. Obviously, these are both purchased. Um, one attaches to a standard net. One obviously is a floor model, you know, and you could make something like this yourself. Um, and then there's, you know, different colors and styles, of paddles that could all be uh, added in. All right, so let's look, I think I have some more. Um, yeah, so I have some uh, beep balls uh, in the middle here, uh, a, a soccer ball and um, a softball. I, I don't know much about um, beep. I don't know that beep soccer is really a thing. Um, it seems like it would be very chaotic, but beep softball, I, I didn't know about it and I was looking it up. And so I put in two pictures here. And it, it was actually super fun looking, uh, made me, made me want to try it out. So there was what appears to be a sighted uh, pitcher and they call out when they throw the ball, but the ball is beeping. There was a pretty high success rate for hitting the ball and the base, which is the large blue um, form in the picture to the right, uh, the bass also makes an auditory sound. And so you run towards the bass and often knock it over. And that's how you, um, uh, I believe that's how you score or get your points. And so, I don't know, it's a fast action, kind of fun looking game um, that I, 
unfortunately didn't much know about until until now. Um, and I think it's not uncommon for a team that has visual impairment to play against a sighted team. And so the sighted team would wear the mask. I don't know if you can see, but there's a mask on the on the person um, who is getting to the base. And so it puts everybody kind of on the same playing field, if you will. Uh, so kind of some interesting options there. Um, but then on the other side, there is just like a, a miniature hockey game. And I thought, what a great, what a great option this is. It really can um, allow kids to play the, the hockey, kind of field hockey, without any uh, running around, without, you know, without major movement. Um, so whether you are using a wheelchair, even if you have asthma, all these things that might limit your ability to play this game, but you condense it down to this size. Um, and when we think about like changing the field of play for a sport, um, I mean, I think many of us would think about, you know, coming in 20 feet from a field, but really taking the whole sport and putting it in a box, you know, why not? Uh, what a great way to adapt a sport that otherwise would require an entire field. So lots of, lots of ways if you just think creatively about it. So let's see what is next. Um, uh, so group activities. I really, I kind of wanted to just, um, you know, highlight that there are ways that we can get involved with groups. And again, if if part of your your uh, goal, your personal goal, is to increase your social network, um, you know, and maybe it's not like. I love baseball and I want to play that, but it really is just increasing your social network and um, you know being more involved. Then doing kind of a variety of activities with Silver Sneakers, which is a um, older Americans group, or senior center trips or activities. Um, of course, it could be Special Olympics, uh, often independent living centers will have activities to be involved in or trips to go on. So, you know, you can always contact them. And, you know, again, a place for advocacy is independent living centers really are, are there to serve the community. So if they don't offer something, you know, maybe, maybe somebody you support wants to organize something that could run through an independent living center or a senior center. Um, or another disability uh, related agency, but say, hey, you know what? I really want to um, take a, a, a trip to, to see Grant's farm. And I bet there's other people out there that want to do this as well. And so maybe you want to kind of advocate for, to, and take this on and really, you know, grow your community in that way. So lots of other, uh, disability related agencies that have specific activities or even camps that you can get involved in. All right, and then the next slide I think has more options. Um, so bingo is a you know pretty uh, low impact recreation that a, a lot of people really seem to love. Um, I'm not I'm not a big bingo player myself, but I do like that there are many ways to get involved. So the middle card is large print, uh, high contrast bingo card. The, the green card on the left, I do like because you don't have to have any kind of um, blotter or anything. The, um, the red are just little shades that come down. They're super easy to pull down. Um, there's nothing that's going to get knocked off. You know, some of the places that use markers, they can get moved around. So this is just a, a, a kind of an easy way to, to access that card. And then on the right, there is a Braille uh, bingo option. So all kinds of options for things like bingo. Let's see what is next. Oh, so there's some other games. Um, so dice, uh, any game that has dice, there are uh, about a thousand different styles of dice. So the the ones here are tactile and high contrast. 
and they come in a wide variety of colors and styles, you know, go on and on about dice. Um, the board, the board um, on the on the left, sorry, I'm not good with right and left, um, the, with the colored tiles is a Sudoku game. So it is a tactile um, colored Sudoku. So uh, being a fan myself, I had to throw this in. I thought, you know, this is great for folks with a visual impairment, but also, you know, somebody who really likes that tactile um, approach to a game. What a, what a great option. I had never seen that before. Um, and, you know, there's less of a group activity, but I still thought it was fun. And um, the, the, one on the, the one on the right is whack-a-mole. So, I mean, who doesn't love whack-a-mole? Uh, this one lights up and it has, you know, kind of a limited field, but I just thought what a, what a great way to, to engage with a board game. Uh, other than, I mean, who, what's better than whack-a-mole, right? Um, you know, and I think, I, I don't know that I have much more today that, oh no, I do, I do have something else. Yep. Oh. I forgot to get the name. So because I can't go through a, a kind of a outdoor session without bikes, um, I did have to include some bicycles. So the bottom yellow one is um, a recumbent bike. And for those of you just, you know, general information, recumbent bikes are easier um, on the back and neck um, because you're sitting in a more upright position instead of leaning over handlebars. So for a lot of folks, a recumbent bike is just a, a more accessible option. This one is a hand crank recumbent bike. So your feet strap in to the front, but your hands do all the work. So for somebody that has paraplegia, this is a great, a great option. Um, the red bike at the bottom, um, you can use hands and feet to, to motor this. Um, this is, I think of as a really great bike for somebody that has uh, limited use of one arm or one leg, because you can still uh, put your feet on there and, and motor around um, you know, with your hands supporting your one leg or your legs supporting one arm. So it's just, I think, a really kind of cool option. And then this bike at the top, I, I, I put it in, it's less of a bike and more of almost like a wheelchair, um, I, I meant to look it up. I think it's called a slinker, um, uh, but I think it's so cool. So basically it's a mobility aid. So you walk on this bike, um, but you are fully supported with the seat. I just think it's a really cool invention. So I had to throw it in there. Um, I, and I, I, I'm kind of remembering it's called slinker. If, if anybody does know, um, or is quick on the Google and wants to look it up. I, uh, I just think it's, I think it's really fun. All right, that might be all I have. Yep, that's, you know, like I, I was kind of saying, there's so many sports, there's so much to do outside. There's just, it's so wide. I had to kind of narrow it down somehow. So uh, last month we did a little bit more of nature stuff and this month a little bit more of sports. But you know, it's a wide open topic, and I really just encourage you, if for the people you support, you know, think about that that star and what is what are some goals that you can go forward and do something outside, um, you know, whether it's with other people or 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 just with you know your family. Um, what are some ways to get involved? So. That's all I've got for today. Oh, I did. Wait, put you in, have we more. We but wait, need, there's more. No, we don't need to stop on that slide. That's just kind of uh, another advocacy slide. <laughs> That's great. Um, anybody have questions they'd either like to say out loud or put in the chat? Uh, someone did put in the chat about the recreation, www.recreationcouncil.org has more information on leisure and recreational opportunities for people with disabilities. That's good to know. Yeah. Anybody have any questions out there? 
Scott, that was excellent. Good it's always fun to do a little research on, on, uh, on sporting stuff and outdoor stuff. Yeah, I don't want to play that rugby though. That looks scary. <laughs> I've played. I I tried it. It was it was it was a little scary. It was fun. It was crazy. Well, if you guys do have any questions, go ahead and drop them in the chat. And Angelina, I'll have you go ahead to the next slide. So just to kind of update on what's happening next, um, we have our open door workshop scheduled for the rest of the year. Um, they will generally be the fourth Wednesday of every month, except we did move November and December up a week. So we wouldn't be bumping into the holidays. Um, we thought November might be a nice time to talk about vacation and travel because maybe people are planning some vacation. Um, and then really talking about social isolation in December around the holidays, but you can kind of see our, our topics up here, um, healthy living next time, inju um, injury pre prevention. Now I, I'm having trouble talking, but you can see all those. So, you know, please go ahead and get registered. Angelina does a great job of sending you out, you know, newsletters and updates on registration. So those will be some of our upcoming ones. If you can go on to the next slide, Angelina. So just to kind of update, we talked about the, the Life Course Nexus. So we, we've got um, our Life Course website showing here. It's www.lifecoursetools.com. So if you want to check out anything about just general Life Course information, any of the tools that we have been talking about over the past you know, several months, you know, please feel free to go out there. Um, go ahead to the next slide, Angelina. And then here's our contact information. So if you have questions or anything, I know that there's um, a lot of information that Scout gives out every time. And Scout, do you want to do a shameless promotional plug really quick about the centers around the state that we've talked about before where you can test some things out? Yeah, the demonstration centers um, are located all around the state. And, um, you know, coming out of an independent living center background, I'm like, if you don't have a demonstration center, but you have an independent living center, you know, use them, use them for, for uh, information, you know, really, I would say great folks and a great resource. And many of them are on the call today, um, but feel free to go into demonstration centers. They might not have a, a huge selection of recreational materials, but they do have a huge selection of uh, information on assistive technology. Great, thank you. Angelina has put a closing poll up for us. If you could, uh, if you guys could fill out your closing poll there for us, so we have information on what you need and want. Um, I'm just looking at the chat and see if there's any questions. And Angelina has noted that we will post the video and the slides up on YouTube. And then she always sends out a very nice recap to everyone. Um, if there are no questions, I'm going to give you guys like the gift of nine minutes of your lives back. So <laughs> hopefully you don't have to run to another meeting, but if you do, you have some time now. So Scout, thank you very much. That was great. Angelina, thank you for executive producing and um, please fill out your poll. And thank you guys, everybody for coming. I, I hope that you enjoy these as much as we do. It's, it's fun for us to do and we like to share. And you know, if there's ever anything you have questions about, let us know. Or if there's topics that we have not covered and you would like us to cover them, please go, please let us know that. So, and again, I'll do one more shameless product plug that um, you know, our showcase is April 13th and 14th here in Kansas City, or Kansas City, Missouri. I just put the scholarship link up there. If you're interested, please register or apply for a scholarship. If you want more information, feel free to email me. Yep, email either either of us uh, with any questions or comments um, or topics you'd like to see addressed in the future. All right, thank you all. Thank you so thank much. You all. Take care, everyone.